Welcome to Re-Review, where we watch movies from our past with a perspective from today. Your hosts are Matt, Bobby, and Austin, and we love the films from our youth, so we're taking a look back to see if they still hold up. In this episode, we're discussing Shaolin Soccer. It was released in 2001, directed by Stephen Chow, and stars Stephen Chow, Wei Zhao, and Yat Fei Wong. And really, this movie is about what if you match the world's most popular sport with martial arts? Now, this is a fair warning. We're spoiling a 23-year-old movie, so if you haven't seen it, we will be revealing key plot points. I'll be the first to admit I had not seen this movie before. I think I mentioned uh, my first introduction to even seeing things about this film was from a quarter, quarter crew uh, YouTube VFX breakdown, and I think mm-hmm. we can probably have some healthy conversations about 2001 virtual effects. In this particular film, Um, feels very inspired by many other things. But I think, Matt, you'd seen it before, right? Yeah, I saw it. Uh, I did not watch it in theaters. Um, I probably watched this a few years after it came out. Like, I watched this on one of those DVDs that's like, I don't know if you remember them, but they they weren't like plastic shell cases. It almost had like a cardboard cover, and then it had mm-hmm. like a plastic clip that went over it. That was oh, yes, the, yes, yes. That oh, was the kind of DVD oh, yeah, that, that case that this one came in. Oh. You're so. making me want to go find my <laughs> DVDs that are like that, yes. Worst I feel like I have a, like an OG Matrix, <laughs> right. Matrix DVD yes. in that same one. Yes, right. yep, yep. But yeah, I I had seen it a, a while back, back when I was in like high school, college era. It, it, but it was one that was released in the theaters here. Uh, it probably had a limited release, from what I remember. I mean, this okay. one was one of those ones. I feel like this would fall under the radar of you know a lot of people like over here. Um, but then like I think once it hits like. Uh, home release i feel like that's when movies like these tend to kind of mm-hmm. pick up bobby had you seen it before i did i also saw it home video release um probably shortly after it came out um matt could probably speak more to this but i do believe that i also saw a different version of it i don't remember much of what we just saw so <laughs> i'll tell you that there are a couple of different versions out there apparently why is that? Why would they cut? Well, I mean, <laughs> yes, Matt, tell uh, so, us why. <laughs> so, I mean, I can't really speak for the the logistics of the reason why I think they might have chosen to do that. But I mean, I know that the version that we just watched was the nearly two hour version, which is the director's cut version. The one okay. that was released in the U.S. <laughs> was they shaved off at least twenty to thirty minutes from that um, for the U.S. release of it, and then I think the version that was initially released in like Hong Kong because this this is like a Hong Kong uh, movie I think it might have the initial one was 80 minutes long was the initial release huh. and the version that I watched the first time was definitely the US version where like a lot of this was kind of cut out so some of this was the first time I've seen it so it was kind of a new experience even for me 80 minutes you, is where I mean, it's you at. Have, that's, the, that's the good stuff right there. You have plenty of practice like editing. And I think there was a lot of comments as we watched <laughs> this. You can feel the spaces that were lengthened for no good reason. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and they use the same shots over again. Like, that was the worst part. Oh, like, yes. That, yes. I, I understand. Like, I get the Ridley Scotts of the world who are like, well, I want to have my three and a half hour cut. My, you know, the Peter Jacksons that want to have the extended cuts of Lord of the Rings. I understand when they say, well, we have a story and we don't want to be restricted by audience, you know, retention times or anything like that. Right. I understand those needs, but when you're repeating shots that now, now it just feels like they're just trying to hit that two hour mark for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it was really confusing. The times I was just like, wait, why did they use the exact same? Okay. I guess I'm just going to go with it. And I, I said that multiple times. It just feels like those like really low grade, you know, TV shows you see sometimes where they can only film a stunt one time. So they mm-hmm, filmed it from mm-hmm. 15 different angles and they'll just, I mean, they do that <laughs> in like every angle, like in Chinese martial arts movies, you'd see that all the time. Like if Jackie Chan's going to fall off of a building, they're only gonna do that once. And so they'll right. show it 10 different times. Mm-hmm. But in this case, it didn't really make much sense when they did do it, unfortunately. Yeah. Some of that kind of stuff, I don't really mind too much. I mean, like, especially with the big stunts, I think it's kind of cool to see it from different angles. But I remember the first time I saw that, I was like, wait a minute, is this a glitch? Like, what happened? Like, why, 
why why are we seeing something we just you saw the movie jump backwards for yeah a like what what happened like and i have originally thought even when i was much younger thinking gee like this is breaking my natural sense of like of like disbelief where i believe the movie to be occurring like from one timeline moving forward as opposed to like wait let's stop and reverse it and go back over again but i mean i i can see why they do those kinds of things i was like did you just everything all at once this movie (laughs) 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 or see i'm even forgetting the name of what that's called um the the focus on the kung fu our lead mighty steel leg sing is obsessed with kung fu wouldn't you say Mm -hmm. i think he's trying to spread the word of kung fu while also being able to make a living off of it though you know what's funny think before we started this for some odd reason i felt like he was a little bit more desperate for money in my memory and going back is like Mm -hmm. he didn't mind being a janitor like he would clean stuff Mm -hmm. he would like he didn't mind getting to that level i mean the first time we see him, he's collecting cans and plastic bottles and stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it feels more like he's just trying to spread the word of Kung Fu more than trying to make money off of it necessarily. Whereas mm-hmm. like some of the other brothers and Golden Leg, it kind of felt like they were more about the money aspect of it a little bit more, at least at sure. the beginning. And then it kind of morphs. From well, there. they definitely dove hard into the freebies that they were getting from their sponsors. <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> It was one of those two where we get a lot of, there's a lot of just like slapstick gags, right? And yeah. Really early on, the uh-huh. fact that they threw in a banana gag, <laughs> it was like, wait a second, are we watching a cartoon? And I think yeah, this, this is where like I got live really surprised action, because tunes. I didn't, I didn't understand what was happening. And I was like, wait, so this is going to be more martial arts focused? Like, where does the soccer come into play? Then all of a sudden we get these singing and dancing bits and especially that beginning scene with uh with golden leg where he's envisioning the power of soccer ish, but he, you know, at some point they cut back to him and he's still dressed in the mm. dream sequence clothes yes. that he has to take off. Like I actually really appreciated the way they approached the comedy. Yeah. They're the one thing that I'll definitely give this movie for sure is the way they approached the comedy, especially for the time was more like it was unique so like you know especially that time i mean we're talking about like american pie and you know the kind of comedy we're used to in the u.s this is definitely a different approach to comedy but i definitely for whatever you want to view this movie as they definitely took liberties and had fun and kind of pushed the limits of what they could do with what they probably had for a budget as far as like Mm -hmm. camera techniques i mean the one thing that you know I, i wrote down right away was that transition for uh uh the evil coach hung yeah that was, when, that was a really cool shot right there it went from young him on the soccer field to older him you know wearing the you know the blazer and everything like that kind of shot like you know that's one, that, that probably would have cost michael jackson you know 10 years earlier a few million dollars <laughs> for a music video right so that was that was clean yeah it's like what one one continuous smooth shot fading from black and white to color looked nice they did a good job on that one. There was a couple of them I felt like that kind of, even just the camera angles, the way they kind of played with the camera, especially like later on once they get into the real soccer bits, I think mm-hmm. was pretty, is a pretty good use for what is. And I feel like that's the benefit of being a movie like this. And I think it happens a lot in cinema, especially even now. Like you look at like Godzilla Minus One coming out, we, you kind of get surprised. Like we, we are used to like $200 million blockbusters here. And it mm-hmm. being so kind of boring and uninspired in their usage of camera and effects. And you get a movie like this that where they don't have a lot of money to work with, but they can be creative with it. It almost reminded me of like some of the early Raimi stuff that we've mm. watched, you know, like with the zooms and like the really intense like push ins and the twisting stuff and no, the, the wide stuff angle lens me. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Started to get kind of I was getting nauseous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well i mean it's it's, it's going just, back to the idea of using your you use the camera to create emotion right it's supposed to uh-huh. it's supposed to tell you how you're supposed to feel or what the scene is supposed to be and you don't really see that sam raimi is a good example of somebody who does do that who uses the camera to tell you oh this is a scary moment this is a you know a exciting moment or a tense moment mm-hmm. so but yes it 
it does kind of get a little bit out there sometimes, unfortunately. We, I mean, I think one of the things that we're feeling from this extended edition, Matt, you made the comment, when are we going to get to the soccer? And I have to agree. It feels like it took a long time to get into the soccer portion of this movie. Yeah. It really reminded me of one of those like Armageddon type of movies or like the other like superhero movies where they're like collecting the team, like in the beginning, you know, like Mm -hmm. the Armageddon type of movie where basically like they all disperse and then it's like trying to get them all back together. But then I remember thinking like, oh man, this is kind of taking long, but I appreciated the stuff that they cut out. Like, and I thought that they did a really good job of like, wait, jump, jump. You appreciated what they cut out? Well, no, let me, all right, let me explain. Like, I, I liked how it felt like it took a long time to get to a certain point, but then they would jump in time. Like, for example, like the scene where the Kung Fu came back to them and they were all just like, you know, like an American movie would be like, okay, montage time, try to figure out how to get it back to them. But then, no, like it was them. They're like, they don't know any Kung Fu. They don't remember it. You know, like in in some ways they're, you know, going out of their way to show that these people are misfits and they can't do it. And they're not really like suited for this kind of thing. Like the guy who like, who's the fat pig guy who they say who he, the lazy guy, you know, like. Then all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's like, okay, boom, here they are, here they are, and they're in their kung fu poses, just ready to go, and they're all masters now, and this is it. It took such a long time to get there, Bobby. <laughs> I, I was I was more ready to get into the soccer portion and see all the the craziness. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think the training bits were were fun. Um, they still took a while. I think the the egg gag was odd. Um, mm-hmm. Where they reused I the mean, scene. They tr- yes, that's definitely one of the places where they reuse the scene. And I think, you know, coming back to the CGI talk, this is where we started really seeing the involvement of like a CGI soccer ball. Mm-hmm. And sort of this recurring element of, of CGI through the film where, you know, they didn't overly use it. I don't know how to, I don't know how to say this. I guess they did overdo it, but. And they made it work for what they had, I guess. It didn't look great, but it was fine. I think it was fine. I mean, for what it is, I mean, the time period and probably what the budget for it was. And it, you know, it's funny because like we're sitting here watching like the Blu-ray quality version and, Mm -hmm. you know, even with it being a movie from, you know, the year 2001, it holds up fairly well cinematically some of the visual effects I feel like held up pretty well, but yeah, there were those occasional ones that kind of fell short, but I, I mean, even what, logistically though, if they're trying to shoot the movie and they're trying to do all this crazy stuff, like, I mean, it just makes sense to not have the ball there. Right. Like, I mean, like if they're just pretending to do crazy things with the ball, like it just seems yeah, like put it in after. Yeah. Just put it in after. I'm sure it probably made it, a lot easier to at least get it in a organized fashion. Like as far as you would, I mean, just like imagine trying to pretend like the ball's there and like where it's going and what it's doing. And then they probably, they probably just like do stuff and then the CG guys will do the best they can with it. And there's just make it work. There was probably a couple where that kind of did fall short. I think. Mm-hmm. where like they kind of had it was almost like they had kind of forced the ball to be where it yeah like to be. that was like the break dancing stuff i thought it looked cool but it, they weren't really kicking they were just kind of dancing and the ball was just <laughs> kind of like bouncing around like that was like the magic ball right it was like captain america's shield it could do whatever they needed it to do i feel like that's a good way of looking at it and i didn't mind the the, the dancing i guess we could talk about the ensemble as you called it bobby with the getting the team together did you have a favorite brother i guess i like the fat guy the lazy guy you reminded me of myself i'm pretty lazy <laughs> stuffing potato <laughs> chips just all over eat potato my chips face. over and over <laughs> yeah while i'm working and half of them are stuck to my face oh my like goodness a potato chip beard i could say you haven't done that in front of us but i, I guess we'll be ready <laughs> for your crunching on the next the next recording matt did you have a favorite uh i mean I'd probably say from beginning to end, it'd probably be uh, Iron Shirt was probably my favorite. I feel like they gave because like his first introduction was like 
you know, they gave him, he was like the, he was trying to pretend to be like a, like a big shot. Mm -hmm. Like he, he, like he's making up all these lies about how like his car was in, is being borrowed and like all this, like he was talking about all this stuff that he was, you know, couldn't do. And the reason why he was getting on the bicycle is because he lent out his car. And the reason why, you know, he couldn't eat lunch was because he's too busy and not, obviously trying to pretend like he was who he was. And then mm-hmm. throughout it, I feel like they tried, he probably had one of the more interesting personalities out of them, but I also liked, um, oh, I don't know what his name was, but Force brother, the lightning hands, the one mm-hmm. who, the Bruce, the totally like legit yeah, looked like Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Right. <laughs> was like, I was like, holy crap. For sure. Yeah. They totally leaned into the Bruce Lee. I also liked the cigarette guy. I thought that was kind of funny. Ironhead. You got to have the old guy, you know? You I really liked Ironhead. And I think, I, you know, there was a lot of pain in this movie and a lot of just people being cruel to each other. And poor Ironhead just really got it at times. And before they unlocked the power, but even after they got into their battles and and the way that they were getting beat up, oh my goodness, it just was, uh, it was, it was definitely brutal to see. I feel like there's two things going on. So we talked about, you know, the soccer team assembling, they got to go to the tournament, yada, yada, yada. But there's also a love story in here. A Tai Mm -hmm. Chi focused love story, a Shaolin Kung Fu Tai Chi matchup. And from everything I learned as we watched it, this was not really fleshed out in the original, no, or at least man, in the this, eighty this, minute cut. This love story stands up that stands there with like the notebook and this is this is, <laughs> I don't this know is how one to take of the that. greatest love stories of all time. Oh man. <laughs> Well, is it, I just isn't, wanted to isn't let that the, one isn't the way, isn't the way that men woo women by like just insulting the way they look? <laughs> well, you know, that was the, that, that is the weird thing to be fair. And I, you know, I said that the, one of the things that they really changed was a lot of the scenes between, uh, Singh and, uh, Moy was, um, was their stuff like their love stuff. Cause like a lot of the key things happened. Um, I know the dance sequence got cut out um, in the original version mm-hmm. for the most part. Um, when she went to whatever that salon was and got made up and got the 50 inch shoulder, you know, pad, you know, outfit going on. Like I was here for it. Yep. I feel like that sequence is literally what I remember was she shows up and he's like, who are you? You look crazy or something like that. Like the scene where they're late, like later on, just talking off, by, off to the side was all that happened in that version. And then she Hmm. felt insulted and then ran away. But in this one, she kind of was like playing along with them being kind of mean, even though it was affecting her. And, but then she goes back to the group afterwards. Yeah. And then, yeah, they, they, they had more stuff in here, but I don't necessarily know if it helped it or hurt it. I definitely think the original version, uh, seeing came off way more cruel to her. Well, that's what I was wondering, because at some point they're having their side conversation. She's like, oh, is this love? And he's like, what is wrong with you? I've never even thought of that word. How dare you bring this this love word up with me? And I was like, what is happening right now? We barely she's barely trying to come out of her shell as a swan. And you're just ripping her apart. Come on, my dude. And to be fair, like I could see where she get the wrong idea because he was going out of his way to take her to the department store. He was kind of laying on compliments quite a bit. I mean, he was basically, Mm -hmm. he was calling her beautiful quite often. Yes, he did. And when he did it the first time, I very much was like, well, he's just trying to get the rolls for free. The buns, the sweet buns or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. And then he did it again at the department store. You you know, he (laughs) flies and all. He was like, you're beautiful. <laughs> um, so I, there's no reason why she wouldn't get the wrong idea about it. I mean, what was the deal? He was just admiring her Kung Fu. You know what? That's actually like, probably good. Cause I mean, he is just about the Kung Fu. So I guess he just sees the Kung Fu, like the, the inner Kung Fu beauty, I guess. And that's all he was really admiring. It's, it sounds like a man, right? <laughs> I I think we should tread lightly here just in case. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. Let's marinate that one too. Um, ultimately, I think throughout all the action, this is such a 
to me, clearly inspired by animation, right? They were doing a lot of cool stuff to mm-hmm. to kind of pit them against various teams who also had uh, their own, I'll say, um, Kung Fu Masters. Even though we, we don't really know that there are other teams that are specifically trained in Kung Fu to then take it to soccer. They they meet some uh, some foes who bring them, you know, to, to act as initial worthy adversaries. You know, their first match, they blow them out because they're so good with their Kung Fu. Mm. But eventually we meet the um, the team mustache girls oh, yeah. <laughs> who show up and like kicks kick a lot of butt, but then they still lose anyway because they weren't just as good as them. Well, I think that the whole for me, it's funny because as that was happening, you know, I feel like they kind of came in because it's like anything else. Whenever you start seeing something works like, OK, Kung Fu works. So let's try put people in here. And they're like, OK, well, we can't have women in men's soccer. So they put them in mustaches. I still feel like mm-hmm. that whole sequence, the whole reason why they did that more than anything else was because they needed somebody to challenge the goalie because the goalie hadn't really had mm-hmm. much of a mm-hmm. moment up to that point. Because everyone else, yeah. they, they never even got close. So they needed somebody who was a challenge. But like that, that montage was great. To be honest, the way it kind of flowed from very humble beginnings to like they, the stadiums keep getting bigger, the crowds keep getting bigger. Yeah. And then it got to that part where they did uh, end up against Team Mustache. And I like the design of the characters and the costumes and the way that it kind of played out humor wise and kind of mm-hmm. getting to see martial arts versus martial arts was kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, it is, it is funny how they started adding more martial arts into it, even for like team evil, even though there's no indication Mm -hmm. they knew martial arts, but it was there. Well, like evil in particular, did, did you enjoy, uh, coach hung? Not so much him, but I did like what they did with the team. Like it kind of like, it felt very like the T 1000 with all Mm -hmm. the team members or whatever, like where they were just very robotic and, it was almost mm-hmm. like, you know, the, you know, they, they showed them getting performance enhancing injections from America. It was America. total like Rocky three. Or yeah. Whatever, with Drago. You know? it's like, yeah. Like they're very like, you know, machine like, and you know, you could almost have the Terminator music playing as they were going. And then, but the, they would challenge them. Like that whole match was more about those individual challenge moments than an actual real soccer match. Cause like they just mm-hmm. breezed through the 45 minute time sure. limits, at least for the first half. Um, I, I do did, did cool stuff yeah. when they like broke up, uh, uh, the original goalie. Um, Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and just his hands melting. They show his glove bleeding at first and he gets his ultimate challenge and he loses and it's just like, Oh no. And you're totally allowed to in professional soccer, just make up a substitute right on the spot. Right. I mean, at this point, considering everything else that was <laughs> happening, that was the least weird <laughs> Or controversial thing that happened on that field that day. I don't. I, so I, I do agree with the statement though, because my my last note that I wrote down during that last match was, "Is this anime?" Yeah, right. I, it just mm-hmm. felt like this was going. I mean, from like kicking the ball so hard that it became like a roaring, like a tiger or a panther or something, well, oh, yeah, and then the goalie sure, catching yeah. it, and then the one dude jumping up and a little shadow monster appearing above him. Like it just started yeah. feeling kind of bleach all of a sudden. Like there was like all those kind of little character moments and i was actually all for it like i more of that would have been greatly appreciated but i'm sure the budget wasn't there i also liked when the like when they kicked the soccer ball and it kind of like created a vortex and knocked up all the grass and i was like Mm -hmm. ooh, like particle simulations and all that kind of stuff i thought that (laughs) looked really cool well that lets me ask the question you know this is this is gonna sound terrible it's the uh when do you remake the lord of the rings right should they remake this movie i feel like they could i i missed the bowling movie how come they don't have shaolin bowling i to that to, to that point i don't necessarily think that i need to see a remake of this but i like i said while we we're watching it i want to see the fifa cup where they go against the world and there's all the different martial arts and cultures that they have to fight against but I less a remake. I just want to go back to that cut down version. That's all I want. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess I want to see like updated graphics, you know, yeah. kind of take advantage of the tech we have today. Mm-hmm. And if you, I, I don't know, I think it held together for its Looney Tune nature, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very Looney Tune-y, I think is right. We didn't actually talk about um, Golden Leg too much, but as a coach, uh, you know, he wanted to get back at his rival. I guess he succeeded, but 
we don't even encounter him at the end of the movie, right? Things just kind of move on. After they after they win the the cup, yeah. I mean, he's the last one who holds it up, and then it cuts back to seeing, and he gets to see how martial arts is now. Because I mean, it's kind of what his dream was, right? He was trying to get everyone to yep. get more to kung fu, and then you have the lady who slips on the banana again. This time, she does a quadruple flip and lands perfectly, and the one who does parallel parking using kung fu. So you kind of yeah. get his dream, and then. Bobby said, you get the poster that says that, you know, they won <laughs> Kung Fu bowling. <laughs> What's your like insurance premium to parallel your parallel park your car by using like a force thrust? <laughs> on it? <laughs> I promise I didn't cause any damage. I swear. If you're truly a Kung you know, Fu master, think... you'd be able to do it without damaging it. Oh, that's yeah. You're absolutely right. 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 I, you know, I'm here for a Kung Fu world. That That's it's it's a it. <laughs> perfectly you know ended again the idea of someone who was so obsessed with it to kind of get his dream out there so yes bobby maybe we do see the bowling oh it's time to ask what i always ask bobby are you recommending shaolin soccer i thought it was fun i mean i loved i was smiling a lot during the movie i mean it gets pretty over the top and it's it's a bit much but i mean like for me, I don't really watch these kinds of movies very much and to kind of expand my horizons with foreign movies and all that kind of stuff. I think that's a really neat thing to do. So I say go for it. Matt? I mean, I'm I'm actually a pretty big fan of Stephen Chow. I mean, I like this movie. I like Kung Fu Hustle. I even like some of the other ones that probably didn't get as much attention, like CJ7 and The Mermaid and stuff like that. Um. I think that this is definitely a particular type of movie for people to watch. I don't know if this is a general purpose movie. Um, I definitely think that if you're going to watch it, find the trimmed down version. Probably. I don't, I don't think that the stuff that was in here was worth the squeeze personally. Mm -hmm. Um, If you can get the, you know, 90 minute version, 80 minute version, go for it. Yeah, this is where I'm definitely landing in agreement with both of you here, just from the perspective of definitely find that 80 minute version because it feels it feels long. And like you said, you notice the things that could could be cut. Um, but overall, it's definitely entertaining. Its humor was light to the touch. And if you've ever watched any sort of anime type style cartoon, you feel the inspiration and you and you really do enjoy all those bits of it. It's why I'm saying I'd, I'd like to see the graphics updated. I want to see all those things in their in their ultimate form, or at least their 2024 form. Well, as always, thank you for listening. And you need to phone home because you don't belong on Earth.